Yes, not too bad, thank you. Can I just check, uh, injury-wise, we've, we've heard a lot in, in the last 24 hours about Rodrigo and Bamford. Can you, can you give us any updates on um, Rodrigo t trained today. Uh, Patrick, we're going to give him as long as we can. Well, certainly till tomorrow, see where we're at um, before we make our final selection for for Sunday. Obviously, um, in the striking area, we are not overwhelmed with strikers, perhaps. So, but it'll be what it'll be when we we find out tomorrow morning. Then pick a final eleven to start the game on Sunday. I'll gamble on anybody's fitness if they want to play. If I think they're going to make a contribution to try and help us win the game, so it's it, it's the last game. They can have plenty of time to recover, but there is obviously medical issues where uh, it depends. If you risk them, the, the the risk is too great. So, and then of course a lot of it's up to the player himself. What's the mood of the players? Because they've been training quite a bit at the stadium, haven't they? This week? Love love the mood. Um, uh, love the application. Um, here's where we're going to live or die on Sunday in terms of the result and all we can try and do is to give them as much opportunity to get the result that they need that comes with the, the fact that we train here for the, the three days building up to the game and the familiarity is it's, it's all about this arena, this stadium on, on Sunday with obviously the fantastic atmosphere that will go with it as was when we played Newcastle. So, um, and, and hopefully we will go one one step farther and, and win the game instead of drawing it. You've also brought in Gary McAllister and Eddie Gray. What, what impact and Gordon Strachan this morning. Gordon Strachan. Oh, Gordon's been here today, like I mean, so... What's um, behind that? About what, how, how important Leeds is, what it meant to them, you know, where, what the bit more of the history of the football club and the... And the, and the fact that uh, you know that, that they have had very successful times here, you know, and I think that uh, on the on the mentality side, it's about improving our mentality to to, to deliver. So somebody speaking a different voice about football and about what they did at this football club and how much they love the club, I think is is really important. And not only have you to deliver, but you've got to bear in mind what's happening both at Everton and Leicester on the day. How, how do you cope and manage that situation? Have, have well, the fans will tell us, won't they? The fans will tell us what the score is. You won't need me to tell him. You can tell by the mood of the crowd. So, because that happens everywhere. Well, everyone I've been involved with, like you mean. So, and of course, for, for my escape, um, which has only happened last game of the season, only happened once, which is second season at Bolton, like you mean. Not only not only were we winning, we also knew that um, uh, that West Ham weren't winning at Birmingham. So because the fans told us so, well, none of it. But the only focus for the players is to win the game, and they can't do any more than that. Thank you. Good luck, Adam. Hey, Sam. With that in mind, though, don't you want accurate information? Because crowd get it wrong sometimes. <laughs> also, a win might not. Well, not. Be, uh, be no, not not for, not for me personally because I'll I'll be adjusting to what's happening on the field, and um, it, somebody else will have that distraction, and uh, and I'm not so sure whether I'll, I'll tell him on the day whether I want to hear it or whether I don't. Like you mean, so I don't want to hear that somebody's done something there and and I change something here on the basis of that, and it makes the team worse and doesn't make them better. So you know on the view of the game and what's happening in the game and what we're doing, I want to decide on my substitutions on what we're doing, not on what other people are doing elsewhere. And what have you seen since last weekend's defeat this week to suggest that you've got to turn that around and get the win you need? Uh, well, play like we played against Newcastle because we played a, a good a good performance. Our best performance by far since I've been here was the first half against West Ham, outstanding in terms of the way we played and the possession we had. Unfortunately, our final third play was was not up to scratch to score more goals than 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 one, and we should have done. Um, but tomorrow is around the fact that there's tactics, and tactics have to be put into place. One is Tottenham's outstanding strength is the front lads. 
and we we have to as a team when Tottenham's in possession of the ball make sure that that is is not successful and um and then after that is what are the weaknesses of Tottenham and we saw a lot of weaknesses against Brentford last week that we got to try and exploit so we've got to do that we've got to do that the best we possibly can and we've got to play the best game we possibly can and the game they have to play the game for the entire period of the game we can't just you know do what we did against West Ham which is got lost in the second half and and didn't recover yes we could get lost for five or ten minutes and you can hold on and then you come back into the game and we never really did that Once they found out what they've done and who they are, yeah, a great, a great deal. I mean, you know, I mean, all they have to do is, is you know, listen to them. You know what I mean? I mean, Eddie's been around a long time anyway, so I've seen Eddie every other day since I've been here. Like you mean, so you know, I think that um, you know his love, his love for Leeds United, is, and his passion for Leeds United, as is Gary and Gunz, were different eras. You know, of the times they've spent and how. What a great time they've had at Leeds United and what it means to them. Finally for me, Sam, um, how much have you had your eyes opened here as to what's needed to be a successful club? Right, that's confidential. That will be aired in the in the uh, aftermath of this season, wherever we may finish, and um, and see where we go from there. Richard? Sam, you've just spoken about having highs and the roller coaster of emotions in the three games that you've been manager here for, it's inevitable that on the final day of the season, that is going to happen again. With that in mind, how important is it for you to have leaders on the pitch with calm heads prevailing? Controlled aggression and calm and composure, particularly uh, in possession, is a necessity because the more, the more possession we have, the better quality we can deliver the more we can get at Tottenham's defensive unit, which which I think is obviously a weakness based on what we'd seen again, particularly against Brentford last week. So, um, you know, how, how do we do that? Well, we we can't do that without 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 ignoring what Tottenham's strengths are. So the balance of the two means that we try and score first again. We've done that in the last two games and then failed miserably after that. Um, when you score first, generally, eighty percent of the time on the stats, you wouldn't lose the game. Uh, but, but there's an awful lot of time to play, to play after it to do the j right job. And um, you know, I think that uh, it's the only time they've got left to do the right job for the. Well, our ball will be in play for fifty-two minutes, maybe fifty-five. So it's about fifty-five minutes of pure concentration, not ninety. Because obviously the ball's out of play all the other time, so uh, then it's just about getting in the right position and doing the right thing. Um, I want just to see the, their best, and and the the best will will get the fans behind them, and the fans behind them will help them score or help them do what they need to do to get a result. I think. Obviously, you would much rather not be in this position right now with Leeds United, but in football terms, as a football man, are you able to appreciate? The drama, the tension of the final day. Um, no, I, I hate it. What I am, where I am now, because I came here and said to the players, I want to be in a position that if we win, we stay in the league, no matter what anybody else does, and that's not happened. So, I've been uh, disappointed from that point of view because we have had the opportunity uh, uh, to do that, you know, but we've not, we failed to take it, you know, and so. We're going to Sunday's game with, with, in the hope that we can um, do two things. If we are to win, we need a clean sheet, in my opinion, because we, we are not a prolific goal-scoring team. Um, and then try and win by as many goals as we can. Thank you. Michael? You've uh, talked about those that have experienced success here at uh, Leeds uh, and the benefits of their experience. If things all fall into place on Sunday and you do manage to survive in the top flight, it will be perhaps the greatest of all great escapes. So even though you've been here for only a few games, have you considered 
the chapter that you might write in this book's history? Well, I think the, if, if there's been some the greatest of greatest escapes, like you mean, like I can always remember but Brian Robson, a big mate of mine, doing West Brom, like you mean, who, who not only won but needed all the others not to, wherever that was. Uh, we got that similar situation with Le Leicester and Everton. I think with Robbo, it might have been a few more than just two, like you mean. So uh, uh, all we can do is um, win the football match and, and uh, is pray the right word? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Um, but hope the, well, let's say the gods look after us and, and all the other results go the right way for us. But, you know, winning is the ultimate. Winning is the only thing we control and try and control and uh, finish the season, you know, with a victory for the fans and for themselves. And uh, and then ho hopefully after all that, there's a celebration. Regardless of the outcome on Sunday, would you still like this job this time? Uh, that's to be decided uh, after the end. It's always been a, a case of, uh, of we will discuss whatever we need to discuss on the end of the season based on where we are. Based on what I think uh, the club needs to go forward, based on what the club thinks, and if that's aligned with each other, then we'll wait and see. But that discussion it doesn't happen in a morning <coughs> or one day; it happens over a period of time, and uh, and and see. Uh, I just hope that we're talking on a very positive nature on Monday morning, and I have a hangover. Thank you, Graham. Did you like that one? <laughs> <laughs> when you've got Rodrigo instead of Bamford up front, do you have to change the way you construct attacks? Can he be a target we've, man? We've actually changed the way we constructed our attacks in every single game, actually. So, uh, and obviously tomorrow's tactics or Sunday's tactics might, will be slightly different to what West Ham was and what um, Newcastle was and what Manchester City was. I have to say that uh, the the... The, the adapted nature of the player has, has, has been pretty good because we've we've done a lot a lot of practice with it. So in, we haven't wasted our time um, to control the controllables and about how we play against the opposition, what the opposition do, what the strengths and weaknesses are, and how we challenge that. And we challenge that by tactically making differences within the team. Oh, only if it's the right thing for them <coughs> to take the challenge up and the, the medical staff are saying it. If the medical staff told me it's too risky and I wouldn't put a player's career future at risk and, and ask him to do something that may injure him seriously at the end of the game. So the risk factor would be taken into consideration and, there, and, the, and that decision taken from the... But it, it would need to be... 100% supported by the player. Hey Sam, you were fairly disparaging about the impact of the subs at West Ham. I was. Seen, have you seen a material reaction from men in training this week? Um, I, I, it's, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I have a lot to do on a match day and, and, and a lot to decide and a lot to look after. And the biggest and one of the most difficult things that a manager now has to face is, is substitutions times five. Because... You know, if it's not if it if it's it's hard enough it was hard enough before. Now you make it made even harder for us because all of a sudden you make five subs. The coach is crap because his five subs are crap and it didn't influence the game. So you didn't make five subs. The coach is crap because he didn't make any subs. The claims only two subs. He should have made five. He made five subs. He shouldn't have made any. So all that criticism we have to face. But in all fairness, the opportunity to put an Im impact sub on. Is, is a massive decision and when you see it fail um, it's it, it's very disappointing that that player has had an opportunity to affect the game and not lived up to the standard that you expected and probably their, their standard you know and it's not an easy job getting on the field and making an impact so it is it is one of the difficult jobs for them to do but something that we accept more and more now by the fact that we have five substitutes to, 
to deal with now. Last season, the club got out of a, a similar situation, maybe not quite as difficult on the final day. I'm sure you've heard all about Different it. squad. Yeah. Have you focused in any way on that and the psychology behind that? That achievement last year? Uh, it, we, somewhat, yes, but I mean, it's a different squad and, and a different squad of players in there, like you mean. So, you know, these a lot of the players here, you know, have did experience that last year. So I would expect the players that have experienced that to come up with the goods on Sunday. Thank you. Stuart. Hi, Sam. Um, understandably, you seem very disappointed after the West Ham game. I just wondered what your sort of mechanisms and your support I was disappointed in the second half performance and uh, when I was when I was I was right up there with a, apart from the goal we conceded um which would could have been easily avoidable and maybe that was the maybe that was then the turning point of the game because we we never came out in the second half so I can, I can only point in the right direction to the players to continue the way the, the way they played in the second half but they didn't and uh, and th that was a a huge disappointment for me not to take the 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 quality of our football to to West Ham again. It were, I mean, David Moyes said to me how we were, how we were three 0 up by the first twenty twenty five minutes is is why we got back in the game. So when the opposite manager is telling you, you know, who, who I've known for God knows how many years now, um, you know, you, you know you you were on the right track. The only thing we didn't do was capitalise on a good play and then in the end of the day like everything else at this league you get punished for not taking advantage when you're you're in control so a bit like here two nil up I'm convinced we wouldn't lost two nil up against West Ham I convinced we wouldn't have lost but we didn't do it so that's what we've got to achieve on Sunday I just wonder who, who are the people who you rely on to, to lift your mood after a game like that and oh lift oh I lift my mood because because it's my responsibility to lift my mood my mood as James will tell you, he sat behind you there. He's always very, very good when I arrive at the football ground. So my job is to lift everybody, and 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 that's why, that's why I call, I call myself a manager rather than head coach because it's all big responsibility to understand people, to lead people, and to understand how they work and lift them. So it's much greater than, or just as important as tactics. So. I think we've enjoyed our week as best we possibly can and the focus has always been on uh, how do we beat the opposition in in a way that we we enjoy what we've done this week and hopefully they can translate that into the game on Sunday. Phil? Luke Avery said on Sunday that he didn't think the team had it in them to go again in the second half, almost suggesting that the energy wasn't there. So I wonder what you make of the fitness and the condition well, it was there against Newcastle. That's what that's what surprised me. We were better than Newcastle with our energy, like you mean, and you know, and we were pretty good against Manchester City. You know, so so what? It was a huge disappointment because of, because of what he said. But you know, there's mental fitness. You know, mental fitness is much better than physical fitness because you'll give more when you're mentally strong and you're if you drive yourself on mentally then you will overcome that bit of lack of physical fitness that you have. It's a bit like I told you last week, isn't it? how fast you run if I point a gun at you. You'll run the fastest you've ever run, won't you? You know what I mean? So you'll become an Olympic sprinter very quickly. Martin. Uh, there was a few came, but it wasn't good enough for me at that particular time. Most of them was abroad, and at my later stage in life, and with a wife that's followed me all over the place, she just said no way. So that was the end of it. So uh, it had to be one that came up that was that was that would would, in, would interest me. It's just a shame. I'm not criticising anybody. It's just a shame it wasn't sooner. But it is what it is. And, you know, I'm a, a glutton for punishment because obviously what people have said, what the, what the hell do you think you're doing? Not only four games, but the four games you're facing. But, you know, I've given it my best shot. I've enjoyed it as best you can. I don't enjoy it when we lose. I don't enjoy 
travelling back when we've lost and I don't enjoy the day after but after that we analyse it, get over it and start again and dealing with young players again is, is obviously keeps you young in it on the, and thinking love thinking about what we're going to do and what we're not going to do instead of wondering whether I'm going to have a cup of tea and a poached egg on toast and, and walk around the reservoir and watch whatever's on Netflix and walk around the reservoir again it's pretty goddamn boring I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't answer that at, at this moment in time. I, it's like talking about what's going to happen at pre-season here and what's going to happen, what time we're going to go back and all that. Now it's just about all, it's all there because all the lads have done it, but we can't talk about it till after Sunday. Could we turn cameras off if that's okay? Because we're going to move on to the Sunday embargo section if that's all right.